The adverse effects of climate change as a result of the increase in ocean temperature and the greater frequency and intensity of extreme weather events mean that coastal communities in general, and fishing communities in particular, are the first to see their livelihoods threatened. In this context, the Res Coast project, co-financed by the Interreg MAC 2014-2020 Cooperation Programme, was set up to anticipate and respond to the effects of climate change suffered by the coastal and fishing communities of the Canary Islands, Mauritania and Senegal. The lack of physical infrastructure or artisanal fishing production facilities in the coastal urban settlements of Mauritania not only slows down their economic development, it also affects their social and human development. The Res Coast project therefore complements, integrates and capitalises on the learning carried out in projects such as Promopesh, which is a project financed by the European Union and requested by the United Nations International Labour Organisation and its Mauritanian delegation for the development of artisanal fishing landing points on the country's coast. To this end, the University of Las Palmas de Gran Canaria has put forward a preliminary resilient planning project for a landing point in the town of Mejarat in Mauritania, based on the methodology used in the Climate Risk Project financed by the ERDF via the Interreg MAC 2014-2020 program and based on the ISLAB Islands as Laboratories of the Anthropocene line of research by the reputable Earthscapes Research Group belonging to the TIDES University Institute of the University of Las Palmas de Gran Canaria, with the multidisciplinary team from the Institute of Oceanography and Global Change IOCAG, the Technological Institute of the Canary Islands and Rayleigh Coastal Studies. The town of Mejarat in Mauritania, 115 kilometers north of Nuakchot, is a settlement more than 300 years old, inhabited by the Imraguem ethnic group, fishermen of nomadic Berber origin. Mejarat has developed in three centers. West Mejarat, which is the original settlement on the coast devoted to artisanal fishing. Five kilometers inland is East Mejarat, a settlement that has sprung up since 2004 on both sides of National Highway 2. Here, the processing and sale of fish products is carried out, led by women's cooperatives. The school, the mosque and the restaurants and bars are also located here. Finally, 3.5 kilometers south along the road towards Nuakchot is a small settlement based around the mobile phone mast, which was installed in 2009. From an environmental point of view, the entire area faces great challenges, including the inexorable advance of continental dunes that threaten urban settlements. Mejarat West faces the threat of rising sea levels and marine submergence, which affects the environment six months a year. In economic terms, the settlement does not have the minimum water, energy and refrigeration services to guarantee the cold chain necessary to offer quality fish products. In social terms, it's necessary to strengthen the organization of its spaces and the provision of services to guarantee its habitability, taking into account the cultural values of the settlement. For the management of West Mejarat on the coast, considering the rise in sea level and the marine submergence suffered by the area, the Res Coast project carries out studies of vulnerability to flooding, as well as the weather and climate in the region. To protect against flooding on the coast, the use of geotextile material was proposed with the aim of creating an artificial dune cordon to provide natural, environmentally friendly defences. The coastal dune system will also be stabilised and a beaching area for fishing boats provided. The dune cordon consists of sand-filled geotextile tubes stacked and protected under a layer of sand, offering a solution that blends with the environment and responds well to exposure to the different external agents that will act on it. Mejarat also faces great climatic challenges, such as the inexorable advance of continental dunes that threaten urban settlements. Environmental characterization studies of these have been carried out, leading to a proposed plant palisade system of sand collectors in the form of a 20 by 20 meter grid to reduce wind speed on the northern and eastern fronts. This sand collector system is extended to the existing urban centres, making it possible to organise the three settlements and offering a strategy of main streets and open spaces to provide them with a dispersed oasis structure. From a mobility planning point of view, the preliminary plan relies on the existing main road, National Highway 2, as an access point to East Mejarat. Uncontrolled land occupation has been allowed on both sides of the road and the pressure and closeness to the edges of the road leads to a triple threat. 1. The danger to the population, including children and livestock when crossing the road, where traffic speeds are relatively high. 
Two, the pressure of many buildings along the road, preventing the existence of safety shoulders, safe parking and loading and unloading areas, making expansion impossible due to the current presence of businesses or small processing centres. Three, the impossibility of new lanes, which could lead to the need to create a traffic bypass, robbing Mejarat of commercial competitiveness. For these reasons, a green axis is planned with a large elliptical roundabout making it possible not only to reduce traffic speeds but also to design a commercial centre based on the sale of fish products, restaurants and cafes and to provide a connection with West Mejarat on the coast. The plan divides East Mejarat into five districts or sections with a boundary every 300 metres. The separation between them is resolved with tree-lined main roads running east to west. The 40-metre plant defence system is planned to surround the entire settlement. In the preliminary project, the residence of the Hakim, or Governor, is in a central strategic location in the new facilities core, accompanied by the fish product processing plant, the new mosque, the health centre, the school and areas for playing sport. Livestock farming and waste treatment areas are proposed for the south of the settlement, considering the prevailing winds. This will promote the economic and social development of East Mejarat. The road that connects East and West Mejarat also requires improvement to ensure good traffic flows between the two centres of the settlement. This would improve the quality of the fish products as well as traffic conditions. There would also be some landscape restoration with the elimination of open tracks that damage the settlement's natural heritage. Within West Mejarat, there is only one track longitudinally connecting the village and its camps. The road structure is completed with a system that branches off the regular 20 by 20 grid pattern, avoiding the areas most threatened by marine submergence, the areas of sabkas or mudflats and grey dunes. A system of facilities is proposed for West Mejarat, with a landing point in the geometric centre of the new settlement, meeting a double need. One restoring the civic character of the town centre and two, separating the industrial traffic related to the landing point and its trade in fish products. This will allow a substantial improvement in the services required to offer quality fishing products. Architectural improvements are proposed, such as the transversal connection between homes close to the processing areas, resulting in a suitable space with shaded areas for selling products. To solve the problems of burial by sand or flooding by marine submergence, it is proposed to separate the structure from the plane of the ground using a modular system that is easy to dismantle and therefore resilient. Considering the response required to the conditions promoted by the United Nations in relation to the Sustainable Development Goals, the University of Las Palmas de Gran Canaria, in coordination with the Canary Islands Technological Institute, is studying the infrastructure planning documents relating to projects either proposed or under construction, as well as the technical and economic possibilities for the implementation of different urban infrastructure systems in Mejarat. The preliminary project, therefore, proposes the prior planning of large urban infrastructure systems including water supply, sanitation, energy production, cold generation and waste treatment, and the establishment of assortings. The project puts forward a series of prospective population hypotheses based on the forecasts of sustained growth in Mejarat thanks to the improvement of the urban habitability conditions of the area. The aim is for phase development from 1,740 to 13,500 inhabitants, with more than 30% of the land set aside to provide open spaces and green areas for a total of 1,000 homes. The Res Coast project sees Mejarat as a resilient coastal settlement, an oasis in the face of climate change that protects its inhabitants while seeking to ensure habitability and the present and future of its population.